women are increasing their influence in the sport of football and they are occupying and adding meaningful value to a sport that is loved in every corner of the world. Our guest today has also decided to contribute to the male-dominated sport of football and her name is Sunen Jabulo Zungu, the Chief Executive Officer of Amazulu Football Club. Good morning, Sine, and welcome to Sports and Morning Live. Good morning, Vosire. Thank you so much for joining us today and I hear it's your first ever television interview. This is a good way to start it off. <laughs> it is, it is. Thank you for having me. Let's talk about your position in Amazulu Football Club. When your father approached you, Sandi Lezungu, to say, I want you to run this club. Talk us through that and what your initial instincts and thoughts were on it. Okay, um, so I had just come back from Spain, um, from my MBA. And I actually initially wanted to come back and get into the tech space. Mm. Um, but I have a marketing background. I did business science at UCT. Um, mm. So football was never really in my radar. <laughs> um, but when the opportunity came, I grabbed it with both hands because I think it involves a lot of marketing and it would obviously give me an opportunity to just apply my mind and um, do a, a whole lot of strategy um, mm. around that involves um, marketing and working with people, I suppose. So it is very exciting. And it's really beautiful. Now, Amazulu, of course, is a very old football club. Mm. It's been around for years. And some would say that they feel there has been somewhat of a shift since the Zungu family came in. Okay. Um, so how do you find the balance um, as you're running the club to be able to keep the old supporters of Amazulu that are used to things being done a particular way and, of course, attracting new football lovers and the youngsters? Okay, so you're correct. Amazulu has a, a great following from the, we'll call it the older generation, mm -hmm. um, because it's, it's, it's Ikla Biesizwe. Yes. <laughs> That's what you call it. Yembel. Um, <laughs> Ikla Biesizwe. So it's got a huge following, mm -hmm. Um But I think with the vision that the president has, um, we want to make it an inclusive club, mm -hmm. followed by not just Amanda Badala, but um, the younger generation as well. Mm -hmm. So you have to find the balance. Um, yeah. You have to include Amanda Ab 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 Abangani. Mm -hmm. And I think that is also seen in the way the club is run um, and the people that are involved behind the scenes, not just the football players, yeah. involved behind the scenes in running the club. I think, in fact, it, the running of the club is by a younger people. So, yeah, I think that's, that's, that's where we try and find the balance. And as you speak of that and trying to find the balance, mm. I mean, your father, Osandile, has very high ambitions for yeah. the club, but he's never meant these yeah. words when it comes to that. So what is it that you try to do to ensure that the, the brand of the club also grows and matches the performances that we're seeing on the field, particularly since the season has started? So, you know, it's very interesting. I think the support and the excitement around the club um, is matched by the performance on the field. So if the guys perform well on the field, you'll see people get really excited. Yes. Um, so our marketing is around that. In every time we have a game, even, mm -hmm. even outside of the games actually, we make sure that we push marketing. I think we've strengthened our marketing team um, and I don't think we're doing badly at all. We're doing, we're doing pretty well, if I may say so myself. <laughs> I think so too. I think so too. Yeah. Um, something that has always come up in the media um, mm. when it comes to footballers is the struggles that they face once they've retired and people ask lots of questions about but we thought these people were making a lot of money. So mm -hmm. are there any programs that you have at Amazulu to ensure the financial stability of your players once they retire or, or move away from football? Absolutely, Vuyo. So thank you for that question. So towards the end of last year, um, we launched a program called ABC, which is Amazulu Business College. Mm -hmm. I think the college term might be a bit misleading. It's not a college as yet, yes. but the vision is to have it be an actual college, mm -hmm. um, which obviously invites people outside of our own team. Um, but, the, but the vision and the purpose of that program is to um, address such issues. Um, at the moment, it's, it's in the form of workshops and seminars where mm -hmm. we have various people come through to speak to the players, go through investments, financial literacy, um, life skills, mental health, mm. um, all those kinds of things. Because you, you're correct, a lot of these guys, firstly, their careers are very short. Yeah. Um, 
33, 34, your career is over. Mm. And you find that most of them, by that time, by the time your career ends, you haven't saved up any money. Mm -hmm. You don't have any other skills outside of football. Um, and so what becomes of you after that? Yeah. So we're trying to address those issues. So we definitely do have a program. In fact, we're starting as young as um, from our development teams, where we've started introducing mental health um, mm. sessions. And we must commend you for that, for yeah. just thinking beyond what they can do for you on the field of play, yeah. but also taking care of them beyond um, life after football. And as we speak about finances, running a football team, it's not cheap. <laughs> it's not inexpensive. <laughs> Let me rather use that term. Um, so how do you manage that? Because I think so often people think your obligations end with the senior yeah. team and the DSTV premiership, but it goes beyond that. You even mentioned now with your development as yeah. well. Yeah, um, it is, it's, it's, it's not an inexpensive exercise. Um, and I think the way that football clubs obviously generate money is through gate takings, it's through sponsorships. And I must, I must say we have very good sponsorships. Mm. We've got good partners that have, that believe in the brand, that believe in brand Amazulu that have come on board and that assists a lot. And of course the PSL. So those three um, are, I suppose, majority of uh, ge uh, revenue generating. Um, so that's how we try and keep the club afloat. Mm. And most recently, actually just next week, we are launching a, a store, an Amazulu store, Moses Mabida. Um, I suppose that's going to form, uh, mm. I suppose, uh, another aspect of revenue generating. We're going to be selling merchandise and all sorts of things. And that's really beautiful to yeah. see the growth of Amazulu Football Club. Let's talk about your ties with the community. We've seen, um, particularly with the EPL teams, they like to have certain relationships with the mm. communities with which they come from. What kind of um, relationship do you have with a community, Agini, Mani, Kumbula, Amazulu, and, and how do you strengthen that and, and maintain that relationship? Okay, so within Amazulu, we have a community trust that focuses on your corporate social investments. Um, and of course, we have partnerships uh, that also assist. Like, I'll give you an example. When we had um, the floods and the looting, mm. we would partner with some of our partners and we'd go into communities and assist in whatever way we can, from assisting in rebuilding some of the classrooms and um, assisting with food, um, attending to girl issues. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Again, I must mention the whole mental health issue as well. Yeah. We also um, come through with, with, with that. Much more than a football club. Yeah. Let's talk about the encounter this weekend. You guys do have a big one coming up against yeah. one of the biggest clubs in South Africa. In case it achieves, um, what are the expectations going into that encounter? And I mean, we've seen some of your players really doing so well. Mm -hmm. We were speaking earlier about Gabardino Mango, how he just seems to be a new player now that he's found a new home in Amazulu. What are your expectations going into that encounter? We are very excited. Um, and I think the team is quite confident. Mm. We've got a good squad um, and we've got a good technical team, but also we have a good su support structure from mm. management as well. And I think those three things put together form a formidable um, combination. So I think, I think we're going to have a good game. I think we're going to have a good game. We look forward to it. Let's see what happens on the field. Indeed, it will be exciting. I mean, you do occupy the third um, place on the yeah. log at the moment. Certainly looking for a top four finish this season. We Absolutely. Assume. No doubt. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> and we wish you the best as you aim to do that. And just congratulations for all the work that you've done. And thank you for representing us as women in football and really just uh, owning that space. <laughs> Thank you very much. Please. And how was your first television interview? <laughs> <laughs> that is, of course, Sosin Njawulo Zungu, the Chief Executive Officer of Amazulu Football Club, talking all things football and the strides that have been made, not only by her, but by Amazulu Football Club.